Yes, sir. You can start. Oh. Good evening to every ladies and gentlemen who are participating in this program. Engaged to every speak in the of justice on uh, because the lecture has been organized. Or his own. Therefore, I should speak some words. Otherwise, there will be great injustice. Not only injustice, it will be ingratitude. Great judges in time in the Calcutta. And member of the tribunal in Eastern sector. Everybody knows that. And he is a or he is independent of his writing judgment in the tribunal. It is the war crimes. So his voice was the dissenting one, and he is remembered for this reason. Not only he was a bold and independent judge during his own time, and it was a his privilege for the Calcutta High Court that this great judge made the Calcutta High Court famous in the world. As you know, on Western sector at Nuremberg, there was a similar tribunal and the adjudication of the tribunal was going on. All people, all the judges at the time held guilty of war crimes done by the all the members and the powerful persons and authority of the Axis power. But Justice Paul here gave his own views and demonstrated his independence and boldness. It was possible because he has a great sense of the rule of law, an independent judiciary, an independent judgeship is one of the postulates of the rule of law. That's why he could do it. So I pay my greatest tribute and richest tribute and homage to his worship. And I feel that he should be followed over the years by all the generations to come in the judicial system. Even I can venture to say that his Ideas and motives should also be followed by the legal fraternity, I mean the legal practitioner, to make their mind independent while practicing law or wherever in before the court of law. I think he should be emulated, not only by the judges, but by members. Now I will come to today's topic for which I have been called upon to speak something. Today's topic is why I have chosen because of the the provision of the emergency in the constitution and also the provisions of the disaster management act i feel the effect of the operation of these provisions are almost safe and excruciating and tormenting at times but it is illegitimate now, I will examine first the provision of emergency provision in the Constitution. I don't know whether you are having a copy of the Constitution. So, would it be proper? I don't know whether it would be proper to read out the provision of proclamation of emergency. I think I need not read out the entire sections or entire article of the Constitution. It is better I should speak some and substance of the same. The emergency provision before 42nd Amendment Act, it was one thing. And after 42nd and 44th Amendment, the emergency provision was made something else. So uh, first I will deal with the emergency provision before 42nd Amendment. And when the emergency provision, when the emergency was proclaimed in 1975, at that time, the emergency 
then at that time there was the unfettered power upon the executive government to activate the president of india to proclaim the emergency so but basically the grounds for calling emergency remains the same even after amendment <clears throat> what i want to say that proclamation of emergency can be done only when there is a threat of war or external aggression or by armed rebellion this was an armed rebellion or inserted later on as i say for the second amendment it was done by proclamation so the condition has to be satisfied that there is a situation of threat of war or external aggression or the armed rebellion now and this has to be done not by the president automatically it has to be done by the mechanism as provided in this article itself it shall be done when it shall be done when a council cabinet meeting council consisting of the prime minister union cabinet of council of minister consisting of the prime minister and other minister of cabinet rank cabinet rank has taken a decision and then communicated to him in writing only then therefore the executive decision for subject executive decision for proclamation emergency is required and to push it to the president to enable him to formally declare the emergency position now this is a absolutely subjective satisfaction and this subjective satisfaction cannot be questioned before the court of law whether we could to settle and but before amendment in 1976 a large number of read petition was filed with a various cycle and the ultimate in court in that case the famous case you know that where the famous case it is called that uh, this uh, adm adm jabalpur versus sipkant shukla this decision has been reported in 1976 Supreme Court cases it can be found, and in the decision, the it was held authoritatively mm-hmm. by the judge that no. Okay. Oh, shouldn't I have done that? But it's not cool. Yeah. No problem. Oh, mommy, I'm going to go to the hospital. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Everybody can hear you, sir. Then I. Then it was held. Decision. It was held. Then doesn't lie. And so it was just by all the, including the division chief of India, and the later on the other judges also. But Justice Khan, according to dissenting views. he says no it is never he allowed the read petition and he has become famous for this because of his independence Then, in 1980 minerva mills case the supreme court authoritatively and clearly mentioned that this uh, this emergency provision this emergency provision it is said that neither till 342 not the article of constitution contains any provision saying that a proclamation of emergency that it be issued under clause 1 shall cease to operate as soon as the circumstances warranting it is to and have ceased to exist hence as long as the proclamation of emergency is not revoked by another proclamation it would continue to be remain in operative irrespective of change of circumstances so this judgment has consolidated the power of the executive to continue the emergency need the necessity for proclamation is but the period online period, period, 
और विभोक This will limit. This is the minimum we get. So we, in 1980, this is the agenda by the Constitution Bank. So this is the provision of emergency. Now, if the emergency is proclaimed, then what is the implication? Everybody, I have analyzed in my own way. You know that once it is done, the fundamental right. Remain suspended. Originally, all the fundamental rights, including Article Twenty One and Twenty Two, and this is said. It is Article Three Fifty Nine says that suspension of right court by Part Three during emergency. But in in the, in the amendment. Inserting that, except are conferred by Part Three, except Articles Twenty or Twenty and Twenty One, not originally there. It has been inserted by an amendment in the uh, in, in the Thirty Eighth Amendment Act. It was inserted. So it was inserted, and uh, it was sorry, it was inserted uh, by the Constitution Forty Fourth Amendment. In the it was inserted the Article Twenty Twenty One. Why it was inserted? Because to implement the dissenting views of the Justice Secretary Khanna, that during no machinery or constitution cannot take away the liberty and right to life, livelihood and right to freedom cannot be taken away. So, in order to respect to this, this amendment was necessary in this amendment to this Article 259, except Article 2021. But then problem is this: <clears throat> the if the right is guaranteed in Part Three, excluding the right contained in Article Twenty Twenty One remains in operation, then one cannot approach the Supreme Court under Article Thirty Two, as Article Thirty Two of the Constitution of India is a part of the fundamental right and the right. As mentioned in the Part Three of the Constitution of India, but according to me, one can approach the High Court under Article Two Twenty Six of the Constitution of India for enforcement of the provision of Article Twenty and Twenty One. But then, question is this: Article Twenty and Twenty One is that particular one is not the absolute; is subject to any reasonable restriction. As meant as the sub as the procedure established by the law, so maybe criminal procedure code, Indian Penal Code, and other penal provision may be the established procedure of law under which one can be arrested. But the initially it was the citizen did not get any right; their right to remain suspended during the period of emergency to access to the court. Under either in the public law field, a particularly public law field for enforcement of the fundamental rights, but there is no mention whether in Article Three Fifty Nine it is not clearly mentioned that whether statutory right for enforcement of the statutory right under Article Two Twenty Six is available during the emergency provision or not. That is not clear. Fundamental right Part Three was suspended, even in suspended. But if it is constituted that access to justice as is a part, as a right and part of the Part Three, then I cannot approach under Article Two Twenty Six for enforcement of the legal right or any other executive order. There is no bar. So. But the, my point is this: the emergency provision that civil liberty and everything absolutely remains suspended, so to say. And but the other rights, Thank you for it. Thank you.
Sir, you are muted. Sir, you have uh, you have become mute. So please uh, restart yourself, sir. Is it all right? Yes, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are. Yes, sir. You are audible to all. And there are different opinions of any citizen. What would be the situation? Second emergency, no second emergency was proclaimed as yet. But as of today, as it stands, the emergency provision can be invoked on the ground as mentioned in Article 352. And this is a pre and then it is a subjective satisfaction of the executive government. And whether they are, whether this subjective satisfaction cannot be questioned before the court of law at all. But the right under Article 21 and 22, according to me, can be enforced before the High Court in invoking Article 226 of the Constitution of India. But the Supreme Court cannot be approached directly. 32, 32. There is a about the article 30, like 21 and 20, 20 and 21. It should have been done because the approach is held. It is held and also discussed in the constitution that article 32 is one of the heart and soul of the because the right pro Supreme Court of fundamental itself is fundamental right. So even Supreme Court cannot deny. It. The Supreme Court has to entertain the if it is established that a citizen fundamental right is infringed and it cannot actually cannot be thrown away on the ground of existence of alternative remedy under Article 226 because it is a fundamental right. If it is if it is not entertained by the Supreme Court, then it would amount to infringement of the fundamental right of the Supreme Court itself. Therefore, <clears throat> but if during the emergency provision, now as it stands, for repetition's sake, I say that one can approach the High Court under Article 226 for enforcement of the right guaranteed in Article 20 and 21, meaning thereby a right to life, which have a very pervasive explanation and connotation given by the Honorable Supreme Court, which a right to life now includes right to livelihood. Therefore, if anybody is denied by the state action or anything, right to livelihood, then certainly it can be enforced before the High Court under Article 236, and it would be open for the Honorable High Court to entertain such a petition. I'm bound to do that. And this is the advantage you have got because of the amendment done by the uh, next government. And at the, in order to give respect the mandate of the justice, Justice H.R. Khanna. So this is the emergency provisions. But emergency provision actually has not paralyzed the life of the common people. But the problem was that the, the freedom of expression still remained suspended. Under Article 19, still remained suspended. It is a separate it is mentioned in the Constitution itself. Therefore, to form association, to hold a meeting, to and also the picketing, etc., is not allowed, etc., is not absolutely allowed. If it is done, then people are liable to be arrested and confined to the prison. Then, in that case, the ordinary law then reasonable restriction will apply, then people may face a problem. This is the position now. So far, those who are intellectual, who are assertive, particularly fresh, fresh people, fresh people, they will not be able to express their version freely. As Article 19, then will be absolutely suspended if the emergency comes at present. But right to life and right to livelihood, and also other probably the Article 20 will remain operative, it cannot be touched. 
this is the position of the emergency. Now, as far as this uh, whole problem is that the, the it cannot be questioned. Supposing for any bad reason, maybe for ulterior purpose, the executive government, executive government means in truly in sense, as the prime minister, he is the sole authority and becomes a very powerful prime minister. Because a prime minister in a particular government in the central, having a tremendous majority in the house of the parliament, then obviously his decision is final. Because why I say so, is before the parliament for ratification. After the period, it has to be led before the parliament. So, the member of the parliament or the people representative has the constitutional right to know and if necessary they can pursue the house to revoke it earlier so there can be a discussion that right is ingrained in the constitution itself but position is this if the house is house enjoys absolute majority by the any ruling party headed by the prime minister then whenever prime minister gives a whip and etc and also the ruling party then obviously it will be ratified practically but legally what i say there is a check and balance because the parliament will get to know people representative will get to know why what is the what was the necessity for invoking there can be a discussion but that can be according to me in case of majority of the government, that will be an academic discussion. It may fail. So result would be that it will continue. Continue for the maximum period. Or if it's possible, maybe revoke. So this is the position of the emergency provision as far as the constitution. Why I say so? Because in a situation where the freedom of a particular citizen of right of expression, Article 19, right to move around according to Article 19 provided and other also, even Article 14, discrimination, that also remains suspended. Discriminatory action can be taken. And if any discriminatory action is a violative of Article, any decision is taken by the government in violation of Article 14 or any other article, no one can come to the court. No one can come to the court, it can't be questioned, this is the problem. But it is possible, only for Article 21, 20 and 21 only. This is the silver lining that was done. But other remains have been suspended, so one cannot approach. Even if approach is High Court, then High Court will cannot entertain the petition for the enforcement of the equality. So Article, if the Article 14 has been suspended, then obviously, it gives rise to the executive government to take any decision whatsoever nature, may be highly arbitrary, capricious, and it cannot be opened and questioned so long emergency will remain decision. For example, I can tell you, supposing a right to get an employment is not a fundamental right at all, but the right to get equal opportunity the employment of the public for the in, the in the public office as guaranteed under Article 16 is a fundamental right. But this fundamental right will remain suspended during the emergency provisions. And supposing if any candidate is duly selected and, and superseding him, any other chosen person is appointed in his place it is not open for him to challenge during the emergency provision on the, because the Article 16 cannot be invoked. Similarly, Article 14 cannot be invoked in case of any discrimination of any nature. And also, freedom religion, uh, freedom relating to religion activities and practices, etc. That also remains suspended. If it is denied by the executive action, etc., that cannot be enforced before the court of law. This is the emergency provision. So in a limited way, people suffer as far as the fundamental right is concerned. But the normal activity, movement, 
supposing journey within the country, movement, etc. So it will remain as it is. But if it is denied by the government, supposing a train movement is suspended, one cannot enforce it rules in case of emergency provision. Now I will come to this disaster management. Why I have chosen this act? The this act has got the uh, tremendous impact in daily life because <clears throat> when disaster management act is placed into operation now disaster management is not a law which is required to be applied in day to day life as emergency provision cannot be applied in day to day life so the disaster management act can be brought into action only when the, there is a phenomenon of disasters and this disaster required a management only then it can this act can be brought into action and the idea behind is this this act has been enacted only as an welfare measure but there are number of provisions very exhaustive and this act can be sages of various provisions such as that. but the rigor of the act is so severe then sometimes the normal life absolutely remains suspended if people can remain in captivity i will just analyze the act at what is there if we go by the disaster definition it means a catastrophe, mishap, calamity, grave occurrence in any area arising from natural and man-made causes or by accident or negligence which results in substantial loss of life, human suffering, damage to and destruction of property or damage to or degradation of environment and is of such a nature or magnitude has to be beyond the coping capacity of the community of the affected area. So this disaster envisages a number of situations when it can be done. If I remember correctly, if subject to correction, this act was brought into existence in 2005, taking experience of the difficulty while there was a great tremor in Latour in Gujarat perhaps. And it, it, it would be managed somehow with a great difficulty. So with great difficulty, it would be managed. Even, even I believe there was a tsunami. There was a tsunami in various places. So at that time, the act was not operational. So it required a comprehensive act to cope with this disastrous, disastrous result of this natural calamity and other things. So it basically is a natural, it is a disaster arising out of the nature or man-made causes or any accident or negligence. So it causes a loss, destruction, loss and damage. That recently we have experienced the Amphan cyclone and also the another cyclone in the western sector. And this cyclone has made a devastating and destructive uh, impact. This is required to be enforced only on this situation when the situation will arise. But the our the COVID-19 is termed and perceived to be one of the disaster incident. So you know disaster incident, whether it is a natural or man-made. I am not, is it, but it is a very debatable issue whether natural or man made, no one knows. But it is an impact and effect in the world at large and India as a whole, everywhere, not any particular part. So, this disaster is such, it requires a management in various manners. So, disaster management is defined in section 2e. It means that continuous and integrated process of planning, organizing, coordinating and implementing measures which are necessary or expedient for prevention of danger or threat of any disaster. 
mitigation of world at large and mitigation of food in the world not in the part Um, am I audible? Audible. Yes, sir. You are audible. Sir, you have again muted yourself. Please see the screen. left end of the screen sir no sir you are still not audible left end of the mane badike niche dike left end yes now can you hear me yes sir yes sir yes sir don't know why it is becoming automatic meeting so disaster management <clears throat> envisages preventive measure in anticipation and also taking other measure for rehabilitation and reconstruction and actually this this act can be made to operation in apprehension of disasters opposing cyclonic and etc weather etc or maybe other uh, causes other causes done by the uh, uh, people any be other things it can be done so this disaster therefore what i point out to say this act will be applicable when there is an existence of phenomenon of disaster as defined in section 23 and such disaster required a management supposing small disaster is there it can be managed by the government itself so this act has been framed to create a separate statutory body they are responsible for implementation of this act so you will notice if you go the act you will notice a good number of chapters are there as i will summarize that and that uh, chapter 1 the government this uh, enables the government chapter 2 this chapter 2 enables the central government to constitute a body called national disaster management body authority so this is the statutory body and it comprises of various persons of the highest order the chairperson of this national authority is the prime minister himself ex officio and such other other members and this national authority by this act gave him so many duties and powers so it is mentioned that it is responsibility what is the mention what is to be done section 6 the function of the national authority is mentioned section 6 sub section 2 it is clearly mentioned particularly sub section 2 clause l this authority has been given sweeping power take such other measure for the prevention of disaster or the mitigation or the preparedness and capacity building for dealing with the threatening disaster situation or disaster as it may consider necessary and this authority under chapter 2 and then this is the authority of the highest order and then there is a provision for there is a provision under which the central government is to constitute a body what is called national uh, executive committee national committee this committee has to be constituted national body it has to be constituted this is under section 8 of this act it provides that the formation of the national executive committee to assist the national authority in the performance of this function under this act so this are in the official level the chairperson is a secretary of the central government secretary of a particular department i told at present who is the chairperson of this 
uh, in a, in a body called executive committee and it has the stipulated duty and power coupled with power is that to lay down the guidelines for and give direction to the concerned ministry or departments of the government of india the state governments and the mind the direction and the governments and the state authorities regarding regarding uh, regarding measures to be taken by them in response to any threatening disaster situation or disaster and then require any department or agency of the government to, to make available to the national authorities state authorities such men material resources and are also available within it for, for the purpose of emergency response and rescue and relief and in order to function independently these two body are required to be financed by the central government in the act itself and it will act without the consent of the government with the as it appears so chapter 4 provides the state level the state government will constitute a state authority like state authority is uh, chaired by or headed by the chief past the chief minister is the chief issue and also the chairs are also there and here the chief here also in a state level there is a necessity to constitute a state management committee and to be headed by a chief secretary so this stipulation there are respective there are respective there are separate powers and guidelines have been given how it will act that it is mentioned that section 7018 of the act subsection 2d state authority is to act amongst other lay down guidelines to be followed by the departments of the government of the state and for the purpose of integration of this first uh, and mitigation in the development plans and projects and provide necessary technical assistance therefore state committee is to function and implement similarly and it is also mentioned the state government is required to supply the fund to enable this body statutory body to function independently but then all this provision has been made and then not only that It is such a drastic and comprehensive provision in the act itself that uh, if any direction and order given by this authority are are not obeyed, then penal action will follow. This is clearly mentioned in section fifty one of the chapter ten of the act. it says that whoever without reasonable cause obstruct any officer or employee of the central government or the state government or a person authorized by the national authority or the state authority or the district authority in the discharge of his function under this act or Okay. Oh. Refuses to comply with any direction given by or on behalf of the central government and the state government or the national executive committee or the state executive committee or the district authority under this act, then is a punishable. It is mentioned, and this can be tried by the competent criminal court only on the complaint made. by the national authority state authority central government the state government the district authority or state any other authority or any person any person can do it after giving notice to this authority intending to do that in the event action is taken is not taken so therefore it is clear it is understandable that how the act is rigorous and when there is a provision for penal consequences therefore all these things are mandatory in nature and power is very vast and expansive and is so much so even the district authority because there is a provision for constitution of the district authority in district level and also the local government is to do that 
may it also discharge the same duty in the act itself. But the, what I feel that there is the possible of inconsistency and also overlapping of the power exercised by the, all the authorities. For example, if this uh, national authority, this national authority, the apex body, if the national authority, national authority gives a direction, it is operate it operates all over the country. And if such direction is inconsistent with the state authority direction, then what will be preferred? This is also the question. If it is a central if it is a subject of the central legislation, then obviously the central government, this is this national authority will prevail over the state authority. Therefore, I feel that there is a need to coordinate with each other and to cooperate with the other the authorities so that there may not be overlapping, inconsistency, and contradiction. Because, for, for example, a direction is given by the National Authority, National Executive Committee, and an inconsistent direction is given by the state authority to any citizen in, the, in any particular state. And then people have no choice what is to be followed. Either it will be followed one of, one of the decisions or it will not be followed at all. But in any case, the penal action will be taken if there is, even if there is a contradiction. So the people have to approach the court for clarification and for this. Therefore, there is a chance and scope of the contradiction. And this act also provides for measures for requisition and a temporary acquisition of the vast resources and property. Any property, any infrastructure can be taken from the, any citizen taken away. But under this act, of course, there is a provision for payment of compensation is provided. Like land acquisition, the similarly requisition provision is there in the act itself. So under this law, it can be done. But at present situation, it act is so strong that even a measure is taken for complete it's lockdown. A lockdown measure has been taken by the central authority, national authority, in exercise of this power, as mentioned in section. As I told you, they are mentioned in section six. Section six, subsection two, clause L. Recently, I got a official order that has been supplied by Mr. Ashok Chakraborty yesterday. I could know that this was issued under the in exercise of this power. Actually, under section six, the language there is no mention as response power it is the responsibility but apparent meaning of responsibility should be construed to be a power coupled with duty because duty is enforceable before the court of law whereas the power simplicity cannot be enforced before the court of law and under under section 6 subsection 2 clause clause i he says, take such other measure for the prevention of disaster or mitigation or the preparedness and the capacity building for dealing with the threatened disaster situation as disaster has been given. Vast and unguided power, but there is a guidelines as framed in a plan and guidelines have been prepared under that table act. But how far it is doing or not, that is a different aspect altogether. Under this act, the lockdown has been imposed, it appears, and it is continuing. So with a modification, so absolute. Initially, it was an absolute lockdown. And the period was mentioned by the central government, central authority. And But the state authority also modified the period, adopted sometimes, modified their you know, own area. But the lockdown is as we have experienced and we have experienced everywhere. This is exercised by 
under the a power given under this statutory power, not under the constitution. The effect is, according to me, lockdown measure effect is under the under this act is the complete uh, completely confinement to the confinement to home. No movement, nothing, except one can expect the food only or essential, nothing more and nothing. So initial period, we have seen that still the partial now it is being lifted and this is being done under this act. Here is the question, here is the, this, this exercise of this power under the various, under, by the various authorities in this act cannot be questioned ordinarily before the court of law. But it can be done before the High Court and Supreme Court by in the public law field. One can say this action is very harsh, this is an arbitrary, this is a atrocious, one can challenge. I believe various challenges might have been made in the court, but it may be subjudice. But what I feel that the whether the the applicability of this act with the measure taken by the, this authority are justiciable or not. That is also another question. Whether the subjective satisfaction of these authorities can be scrutinized by the court of law because there is no bar in the act itself. In the act but the civil suit only. But carefully the legislator had mentioned that one can approach the High Court and Supreme Court in an appropriate manner, but in, not in a civil suit or other things. This has been. Moreover, the, the function of this authority has been given tremendous immunity. If it is done bona fide, even if something damage is done or any loss, uh, loss occurred, with no prosecution lies. The act is, it, it is clearly mentioned in the uh, 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 clearly mentioned in this uh, this provision, section 71. No court except Supreme Court or High Court shall have jurisdiction to entertain any suit or proceedings in respect of anything done. Action taken, orders made, direction, instructions or guidelines issued by the central government, national authority. So access to justice of the common people, any person including foreigners is open, unlike emergency situations. But if it is a complete lockdown, no one can move out from the court. So the court is not functioning because of the lockdown. Then if the court is not functioning, how one can approach the court and go to the court? So in reality, the justice delivery system is denied. So one cannot enforce that. Supposing any excess has been done by any uh, this officers, and if they do it bona fide, without any malice and etc., the they enjoy the immunity. The, it is mentioned in section 73 of the same act that no suit or prosecution or order proceedings shall lie in any court against in any court mind that against the central government or the national authority or the state government or the state authority or district authority or local authority or any officer employees of the central government or the national authority or state government, state authority, district authority, local authority, or any person working for on behalf of the government for authority in respect of any work done, purported to have been done or intended to be done in good faith by such authority or government or such officers or employees or such persons under the provisions of the SAC and the rules and regulations may be around. They are immune. So this is the position now. And I find that there is also sometimes I find there is some overlapping of the power. Central government have been given the same power almost as given to this statutory body, national authority. So they say, we see that in the chapter 9, section 40, chapter 9, the, uh, no, no, sorry, the central government power is there. Look, central government is to take action. Just give me one second.
Yes. The Yes. Chapter 5, Section 35. It says the central government shall take all such measures as it deems necessary and expedient for the purpose of the disaster management. And it says that subsection 2, clause I, such other matters as it deems necessary and expedient for the purpose of the securing effective implementation and provision of this act. Therefore, if the central government decision is inconsistent with the national body, then what would be the situation or contradiction of the state body or state committee? Then what would be the situation? Which decision are to be followed by the common people? This, according to me, is a question which may arise in future. But now, today, I give an example. Supposing a particular person, the police has blocked an ambulance on the ground, the lockdown, where are we going? Although exemption has been granted in case of supply of food, in case of essential, in case of emergency treatment, it is exemption has been granted. But if the police does not follow it, supposing police prevents it, and as a result, the patient dies. Doesn't and doesn't get any treatment. This prevention by the authority under while working under this act by the police authority or any other authority results in death, although it should not have been done, but it is illegally done. Then, in that case, the citizen has every right to approach for compensation because it was not a bona fide act. As the treatment right to get treatment is completely exempted from the lockdown order, only essential things. The result is that the people are remaining in home confined, so to say, without committing any offense. They are literally serving the, the civil, they are re remaining in civil prison, so to say. But those persons who are committing an offense, they are also liable to be sent to the prison. But the all citizens, and all the persons who are in the country when the lockdown is operation, everything remaining suspended, even worse than an emergency situation, emergency provisions. Because literally no one can approach the court. And because the court remaining closed, because of the lockdown government order, no machinery, how powerful this body is this, how power, how much drastic power has been given to this authority under this act. Even the constitutional machinery remains suspended. For example, the court cannot function because of this, because court has to accept this authority's decision. So it has to be seen whether this, by this, whether any lockdown will be applicable in case of the constitutional machinery remaining in operation. But the prudent suggests that because of the situation for the interest of the nation as a whole, one should respect, and indeed all the authorities are respecting to the direction, guidelines, or orders given by this authorities. But after this period is over, I do not know whether any litigation will be coming on account of this action being taken in Reserva. And then it would be uh, opportunity for the court. It would be then opportunity for the court to examine. I mean the High Court and Supreme Court only, not the other court. No suit lies. So whether which action has been taken bona fide and which action is in bona fide. If it is taken bona fide in discharge of the duty, even if there is a loss, the person or the officer's counsel enjoys the immunity. Even state enjoys the immunity. But if it is found, as I give you an example, that a patient who, has, who is going to a hospital for treatment or doctor by ambulance, but the police or the other officer have prevented 
and as a result, patient dies. So this is not a bona fide act under this act. This is a malafide. So it is a malice in law. So it is justiciable. And in that case, there is an exception. Then one may get a compensation, but not now. When the situation is over, when this because it is a not it is not an act which is applicable in day to day life, like Indian Penal Code and in tax laws, whether direct or indirect tax laws, penal laws, land laws, etc. There are environment laws which in in day to day life those act as an operation, but this act as an operation only on during this period only when the there is a phenomenon of disaster and for which management is necessary in that situation because it cannot remain perpetuity after sometimes it will be over and everything is being eased and everything once it is over then it will be citizen or any person affected can approach the court to examine or scrutinize whether it is done or not for example in the supreme court now has taken up the, the issues of the uh, people who are the migrant workers who are coming home returning home they have taken up the issue that is absolutely and it will be it is it is for the court to decide because the matter is subjudice. So, and let us see. The my point is that the provisions of the act and operation of the act and decisions and measures taken under the act are so drastic in nature that people the normal life is remain suspended. Is a, according to me, you know, worse than emergency situation, but it is a permissible under the law. It is not an autocratic act. There is a permissibility because the parliament has authorized this body and for which the separate body and separate experts are examining all this up. They can't be helped for the welfare of the, for the welfare of the nation as a whole, because the nation's lives as a whole is required as against the individual or some pocket of individual, collective individual life is necessary. So we are to bear, we are to tolerate, and in, indeed everyone is tolerating at everything. So that is why our country is still in a stable condition. So as I understand, these are in my, within the little time, these I find is a comparative study about this two provisions of the situation, different situation, almost akin to each other. And this I find uh, hope that this will give a thought and impulse to everyone to think otherwise. I may be wrong in my interpretation, understanding, but in a democratic system, everyone has got his own individual right, a natural right. Because as you know, a man takes birth with a natural right. And the human being can do anything else unless prohibited by law. But an artificial person cannot do anything else unless permitted by the law. Therefore, a citizen or any person, individual being, their natural right is carved, whether in emergency provision or by this act. And according to me, it may be one of the acts which is reasonable restriction as required, and that is why right to life and livelihood remain suspended in operation. So many people have lost his right to livelihood, but the state welfare state has managed it. Our state government has taken measures, supply of free Russian free food, all government, central government, state government, every authority have taken measures. And also to see that no people die of starvation. But you see, Nothing can be done in a foolproof manner. All effort can be made, and indeed it will be made. I think this act is not a very old one. It's a relatively new one. I think this is the uh, applicability of the act and the first experience of the applicability of the act in a regard in the country as a whole. Not only that, this act also provides to the national authority and uh, sorry, central government to extend the similar help to the other people who have suffered by the disasters. The central government has been given power under this act also. So it is a separate power. 
So God better will do. But only thing is this, as I understand, there may be a chance of inconsistency, contradiction, and and also overlapping. Because if this act provides for the penal measure, if someone violates one while complying with an one's direction, then this the person may violate the other direction. So on violation of the other direction, he may be prosecuted and suffer undue punishment. This requires some, I believe there's some measure to be taken by the authority. So hopefully the all authorities, the expert body, they will take care of all this, whatever loose ends are there and trim it and we'll do the need to. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to express my views on these two issues. And whenever I will get another chance, I will speak. Thank you very much. Thank you.